Welcome to the topic, Schizophrenia, Multiple Sclerosis, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. In this video, we will talk about all these disorders. First is schizophrenia. So schizophrenia is a serious mental disorder in which the people interpret reality abnormality. Schizophrenia may result in some combination of hallucinations, delusions, and extremely disordered thinking and behavior that impairs the daily functioning and can be disabling. What are the types of schizophrenia? Paranoid schizophrenia, which are the symptoms include hallucinations and delusions. Disorganized schizophrenia, this is marked by the disorganized as the name is giving speech and behavior. Catatonic schizophrenia means it is associated with a multiple psychomotor abnormalities and behavioral dysregulation. Undifferentiated schizophrenia, it includes the lack of emotional depth and ideation is simple and refers to the concrete things only. Then as the residual schizophrenia, it is the recovery phase as the severe symptoms usually begin to reduce or fade. What are the symptoms of the schizophrenia? Hallucinations, delusions, quite confusion, unusual thinking all the time, troubled relationships, abnormal motor behavior, disorganized speech, reduced speaking, lack of motivation, social withdrawal, and inattentiveness. There are some positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia as well. When we say positive, it means it is the, there is a presence of problematic behavior in a person. If we say negative, there is an absence of the healthy behavior. So positive includes hallucinations, that is illusory perceptions, especially auditory. Delusions is illusory beliefs, especially pursue, disorganized thought and nonsensical speech and bizarre behaviors. In the negative, we have the flat effect, no emotions showing in the face, reduced social interactions, anhedonia, that is no feeling of enjoyment, Evolution, less motivation, initiative, focus on tasks, allogia, speaking less, and catatonia is moving less. Then we have some practice guidelines for schizophrenia treatment. Acute phase management is done by all these six steps. First, we do the assessment. Then we do psychiatric management. Then if it's not cured, then we use the antipsychotic medication. And along with that, we have to add some more medications and then we use of ECT and some somatic therapies. And also we have some special issues at the last, then they become the first episode patients. The drug pharmacological treatment for the schizophrenia, we use major tranquilizers like phenothiazine, includes thorazine, stelazine, prolixin, melaril. They decrease the dopamine levels in the body. Butyrophenones like Haldol, thioxanthines like Nevin, and atypical antipsychotics like Clozaril, Risperidil, Zyprexa, and Abilify. These conventional antipsychotic drugs, they include the phenothiazines and phenothiazine-like drugs and also the non-phenothiazine for the treatment of the schizophrenia. So when we say phenothiazine and phenothiazine-like drugs, what are those? They are called neuroleptics due to the common neurological adverse effects. They are most effective for treating the positive symptoms and they block the excitement associated with the positive symptoms by preventing the dopamine and serotonin at the neurological receptors. Recurrence common so long-term and often lifetime pharmacotherapy is considered in this one. Physical and psychological dependence does not occur for this drugs. But these drugs, they also have some extra pyramidal adverse effects or side effects. What are those? Serious set of the adverse reactions to the antipsychotic drugs are called as the EPS. The symptoms include acute dystonia occur early in the course of the pharmacotherapy and the additional drug therapy is required to extra pyramidal side effects before they become permanent. What are these extra pyramidal side effects like pseudoparkinsonism? And you have which you have a stooped posture, shuffling diet, rigidity, bradykinesia, tremors at rest, pill rolling motion of the hand. It also causes acute dystonia. It means the facial grimacing, involuntary upward eye movement, muscle spasms of the tongue, face, neck, and the back, and the laryngeal spasms. Then we have akathisia, which is called as restlessness, trouble standing still, 
paces the floor and feet in constant motion rocking back and forth. Then also as a side effect is tardive dyskinesia, which includes the protrusion and the rolling of the tongue, sucking and smacking the movements of the lips, chewing motion, facial dyskinesia, involuntary movement of the body and extremities. There are some atypical antipsychotic drugs also which are used for the schizophrenia, like they are the newer drug class which have been developed to the better meet the needs of the patients with psychosis. So typical antipsychotics, they are of different types, high potency, haloperidol, trifluoroperazine, and fluofenazine, and low potency is thioridazone, chlorpromazine, and thiothexine. Now, what do they do? These typical antipsychotics, they block the dopamine D2 receptors in the mesolimbic area and they alleviate the increase the positive symptoms. And they also block the dopamine receptors in the mesocortical area of the brain. They are the broader spectrum of action, control the positive and negative symptoms and have far less EPS, but some persist. That's why the antipsychotics are more commonly used than the other drugs. They block the several receptor types in the brain, like dopamine, which is called as D2, and serotonin, which is called as 5-HT, and alpha-2 adrenergic receptors. For example, the drug name is clozapine. So clozapine is a safer drug to use as an antipsychotic drug. Now we have a new class of the drug, like dopamine system stabilizers. Positive and negative symptoms, they are caused, they are used for positive and negative. We, they also cause anticholinergic effects, which is almost non-existent in this one. Adverse effects is generally very low. And for example, the new drug is the aripiprazole. So aripiprazole comes under the class of the dopamine system stabilizers, and they are commonly used nowadays because of the very less side effects and because they can be used for the positive and negative, both symptoms. Next is the neurological degenerative disease. For this, the cause is unknown so far. It progresses from hardly noticeable signs and the symptoms early in the disease to the serious neurological and the cognitive deficits. It is difficult to diagnose in the early stages and the pharmacotherapy provides only minimal benefit except for the Parkinson's disease. Currently, there is no pharmacological cure for the neurogenerative disorder. Now, degenerative diseases of the central nervous system includes Alzheimer's disease, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, also referred to as the low Gehrig's disease, Huntington's chorea, multiple sclerosis, and Parkinson's disease. So now in the next, we are talking about the three of the disease, diseases, Alzheimer's, MS, and the Parkinson's. Alzheimer's disease. What is Alzheimer's disease? It is a progressive brain disease that slowly destroys the memory and the thinking skills. And it is most common cause of the dementia in the people, especially 65 plus. Now, what happens in the brain in the Alzheimer's disease? Actually, there is a death of the neurons starting from the mild unto moderate, and then it becomes the severe. So all the neurons, they die in the brain, which is the main cell of the brain. What causes Alzheimer's disease? Most people with Alzheimer's disease are actually older, but just getting older does not cause the Alzheimer's disease. So the causes becomes increasing age, history of any head injury, risk factors for the blood vessel disease, such as smoking, heredity, obesity, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. These can be any causes for the Alzheimer's disease. Now, what are the non-drug treatments which are used for Alzheimer's is we should play the games, puzzles, and try to work on calendars. When a person should be being physically active and the brain the exercises with the small group of the people. Also, we use the active management as the, we use some medications to help with symptoms. We treating other illnesses also and supporting and training the caregivers to better manage the daily care can be towards the active management of the Alzheimer's disease. If we talk about the treatment given to the Alzheimer's medications, number one is the acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, ACHE. These can help to improve the cognitive symptoms like confusion and memory loss. So this is an enzyme which is inhibiting the acetylcholine neurotransmitter in the brain. Next is the mementine, which helps to block and manage the glutamate levels 
and a chemical which compound in the brain. If we talk about therapy, we can give them cognitive stimulation therapy. This therapy creates the opportunities for the group members to participate in activities designed to encourage thought processes, the use of memory and the social interaction. And the cognitive rehabilitation therapy, this theory helps to improve the cognitive abilities and functioning of individuals who are cognitively impaired and have the experienced brain injuries. Now, we were talking about acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. These are the medications used only for the slow progression. Increasing the level of acetylcholine is effective only if there are the functioning neurons present. Otherwise, this therapy is not working. The goal of this pharmacotherapy is to improve the functions and activities of daily living, behavior, and cognition. And these medications include the drugs to treat the associated symptoms such as depression, anxiety, and all the psychosis. Next is the multiple sclerosis. So in this multiple sclerosis, the nerve neuron is affected. One side we are seeing is the healthy neuron and the other side is the nerve affected by the multiple sclerosis that is a damaged myelin sheet that you can see. This is the main thing that happens in the multiple sclerosis, demyelination occurs. So multiple sclerosis, it's a chronic and a progressive demyelinating disease of the central nervous system in which this blue color sheet, it's a myelin. It is a protective sheet, it is demyelinating. So immune system attacks and destroys the myelin. So communication between the neurons break down. So sensory problems, motor problems, and cognitive problems occurs when we have a multiple sclerosis. So what happened in the central nervous system, which includes brain and spinal cord, in the multiple sclerosis, the myelin sheath, which is a protective membrane that wraps around the neck zone of a nerve cell, it is destroyed. Now, what are the affected areas in the multiple sclerosis? We can see on the one side is the healthy neuron. And then on the other side, we can see this is broken, which is a damaged neuron. So signal is not coming and going properly. So it also affects your eyes, your vision. It affects your spinal cord, your senses, your muscles, your brain, mouth and speech, digestive system, and urinary system. What are the symptoms? So all these include the fatigue, depression, vertigo, vision problems, sexual dysfunction, bowel and bladder problems, muscle-related symptoms, and cognitive dysfunction. Some are the fast facts that about the multiple sclerosis that one in five patients are always misdiagnosed for this disease. So we have to be very careful while diagnosing. Vitamin D deficiency also increases the risk and progression of the MS. So and vitamin D is very important to take in your diet. There is another no known cause for that, but the populations located further from the equator experiences the high rates of this problem. Women are four times more likely to develop the MS and it is considered as an invisible illness. We can't see a person is having an MS inside and the pregnancy can improve the symptoms of the MS. Let's talk about the Parkinson's disease. What is a Parkinson disease? It is an idiopathic, slowly progressive neurodegenerative disorder whereby two or more of the following needs to be present. Bradykinesia, rigidity, resting tremor, and loss of the postural mechanism. What are the causes? Gene mutation can be exposure to certain toxins that you are working somewhere, low levels of the dopamine as a neurotransmitter in the brain, and the presence of the abnormal proteins in the body. Now what happened? We can see in this picture, there is a normal neuron and it is transmitting, and we can see there is a loss of the dopamines here in this, and we are moving towards the other side. But now when a person is affected with the Parkinson's, so there is a loss of dopamine. We can see that dopamine is not going into the synaptic left. So the movement disorder occurs. What are the types of Parkinson's disease? Idiopathic, which affects the people around 60 and older. It is most common type. Early onset affects the people 21 to 50 years old. Familial, it is caused by the inherited genetic mutations. Secondary, it occurs as a result of an underlying process of factors. Some drugs, head trauma, and toxins can also cause the Parkinson's in future. Atypical, that is neurodegenerative disease that share the similar symptoms of the Parkinson's disease as well. What are the symptoms of this disease? Stooped posture, masked face, back rigidity, forward tilt of the trunk, reduced arm swing, hand tremors. 
flexed elbows and wrists, tremors in the legs, slightly flexed hip and the knee, and shuffling short, steeped, short stepped gait. Now there are five stages of Parkinson disease. Tremors occur on one side of the body and symptoms do not interfere with the daily activities. Then in the number two, the rigidity gets on both sides of the body, high risks of fall occur and the walking and eating get more difficult. Then falls become very common. Help is needed to get around, shower, dress and eat. Then at the fourth stage, the independent living is a challenge now and additional assistance for the mobility and the daily activities is needed. And number five, it's the inability to stand, walk, eat or swallow completely dependent on a caregiver. So these is a progressive disease. These are the five stages of the progression of the Parkinson's disease. We use some therapies for that. Parkinson's disease shows us tremors, postural instability, bradykinesia, rigidity, loss of smell, dysarthria, dementia, and anxiety. And Parkinson's treatment is dopaminergics we can use, the name of the classification of drug, muscarinic antagonists, A2 antagonists, NMD antagonists, gluta, glumatonergics, serotonergics, and some other drugs. These are used for the Parkinson's disorder treatment. Thanks for watching the video.